Kama Worldwide. Welcome back to Conqueror's Aki Corner. We are back again here to bring you a One Piece manga chapter review. Mm -hmm. Chapter 919, The Ruins of Odin Castle. The Ruins of Castle Odin. That's right. And what an interesting chapter. Mind blowing. I mean, Oda, you have taken us into a direction I did not think we would go. It's still playing on my head, but... Before I get started, I would like to say, smash that subscribe button. If you haven't already, man. I'm not trying to take you by surprise, but smash the subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. You know you love One Piece. You know you love Conqueror's Like a Corner. You know you love this flag. Smash the like button. Smash it up. And if you haven't already, watch our live reaction. You will see our faces go from squinting to eyes wide open links in the description below a lot of surprises in this chapter don't forget turn on your notification button just so that you can be updated whenever ding 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 100%. ding but most importantly of all we would like to thank all our new subscribers all our old subscribers every single one of you you know what shout out to mr clay Cheese. Love and Mimi. Cheese, cheese. Anyone I may have forgotten will look to shout out as many names as possible. Definitely. Thank you for being with us. Always. Like one family from across the globe, from across the net, Everywhere. worldwide. We stay together for life. Interesting chapter this week. Yes. Fun chapter this week. It was. We, we had a, a lot of good moments. When I read it, I didn't feel that there would be a lot to discuss. But there's a lot to chop up. As there is a lot to appreciate. Definitely. We've, we've finally got some sense of enjoyment and a sense of relief at this current moment. So it's, it's been action-packed and we've enjoyed it. A lot of good little build-up and little scuffles, but we're coming to a point now, story development time. Exactly, and there's a real nice flow to Wayno so far because we know we're going to be here for a while. Oh, I anticipate man. us being there for we're the next couple years. Long term. And it's just flowing so beautifully Definitely. and it's helping time go back. First thing, front cover. So we've come to the end of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. This week we had Leo, Ideo, Olambus, and Hadrudin. Yeah. Peace, that's it. Be interesting to see where they go next time. So now there's four of them. We had three last week, that's seven. A few more, I guess, still left. Because I know there's obviously still um, Bellamy and a couple of other people I may have left out, but yeah. Be interesting to see where they go next. You know what I would love? Because he didn't show us, give us hints about the aftermath of the reverie. True. Wouldn't that be so cool? But that's too much. That's a reach. Whoo! Wow, it's a skip to be here in that. Right what? Now. Revolutionary army, come on. Come on, man. That was a that would have been an epic arc if I had more detail. We might not think, you know what? I'm just gonna throw in before we go. We might not get a lot of news from the outside world in Wayno at all. Because they're very secluded. So there's gonna be a few couple of years where we might not get no uh, birds coming in and no big news Morgans, no newspapers, nothing. That's going to be hard. Big time. But, cracking on. Let's go. First, part acknowledgement, part theory. What do you guys think of this? Speed, the headliner, has been tamed by Otama's Dangle. At first, it's just funny. It's just cute. But how do you feel about all these um, synthetic devil fruit users yeah. who are usually some kind of animal? Being controllable by food. It's the perfect plot armor. Perfect that. plot armor to, you know, in every arc, there's always a way that they overcome great numbers and great odds. Yes. And this is another way. Is that when they went to Whole Cake? How did they overcome them? Do you understand? Like, True. they had convenient powers, convenient yeah. displays. There are always people showing up to help you. The Mirror Mirror World, they took over her, they took over Brule. Exactly, the, the taking all the sea slugs, which seems impossible, but you know what, yeah. with a fishman is possible. What great plot armor, potentially, if food, because at the end of the day, the food has been our monopolized in Wayno, and that might be a reason for that. If Luffy and, and the crew stealing food doing these raid attacks, as well as certain abilities like Otama's Dango, she could tame them all. She could. She could potentially com convey some of her Dango into the mixture of the food and trick all of the people to eat it. Or she could get her Dango, give it to one of the strongest Devil Fruit users, synthetic Devil Fruit users, and 
Once you're in control of that individual, take out the rest. It's a lot of possibilities to well, come God out. God knows how she knows her power. Maybe she could just sprout loads and just sprinkle and them there in you the there. Wow. And we know she's developing as an individual because she's trained. So what is she, her level of her training going to be at? Exactly. Moving on. A little bit of comedy, but when he's saying bye to Otamo, he's going back to a village, he tells her to tell Big Nose that he wants to hold on to the sword because it makes him feel like a samurai. And I'm going to connect... Remember this, Luffy feeling like a samurai. samurai. I'm going to connect this later, so hold that for. But ultimately, he hasn't used the sword. He just holds it and punches with it. He's getting into the flow of Wayno. And then you have Zoro behind him saying, let me <laughs> see it. We're building up the hype to Zoro getting the cursed sword. Zoro's getting... Zoro needs a new sword. He's getting hard for that sword, man. <laughs> Like, seriously. Yeah, he's on it. So, that's one thing. We have further comedy, which was just amazing, which was uh, the people are being saved <laughs> by all the food. Yeah. They're so thankful. Luffy's like, don't mention it. And you have a lovely clash of captains. On one hand, you have Traffy Guy, Tra uh, Trafalgar D. Waterloo, saying, pirates helping people makes me sick. And Luffy counters that with... But we stole the food. But we stole the we're food. We're thieves, but we're, we're still pirates. We did what we wanted with it's it. A, they rob it, they'll give it back. Robin Hood moments. Again, Luffy doesn't care. He about keeps the meat, though. He keeps all the meat. That's what I'm saying. So, again, just more beautiful comedy. It's, it's a really brilliant enjoyable. play. Really enjoyable. Really play, play on words, man. And, and it's like that ongoing theme. It definitely. Of what it means to be a pirate. Always. And, and what, these guys playing their dream. And everyone else's definition of their own version of pirate. And the funny thing with his law, his character development is brilliant because he is inevitably a good guy. But what he doesn't like is everyone messing around. And he thinks that he has to play daddy or play the adult. He's but, got some darkness about yeah, him. Yeah, but he, he, when he wants to get gritty, he just he close, he squints and he has a little smile about him. So he, know, he likes to get involved. So. What's my favourite line of the whole chapter? Yeah. I really like that. Then we get some more plot development mm. and we go to school. And we see the kids of Wayno yeah, with a pretty teacher. She was pretty. Um, and she was just um, teaching them about Odin and the nine red sheaves, demonizing the Kazuki clan from 20 years ago. So the whole new generation is demonized to praise Shogun Oruchi. And, and inevitably understand that the history of the previous um, castle owners and the previous kings whatever, and Shogun, they were evil. So they get brainwashed to understand that whatever is being done now is righteous and peaceful. Whatever was done before was bad. It's how you raise a good army that's obedient. Yeah, it's true. At the end of the day, especially for a country whose importance is, and it also says about people keeping people out who want to because they cheap in the out. lesson is that we don't want people coming to our country. Yeah. Do you understand? So you're brainwashing the kids from a young age to not want to go out into the world and yeah. not let people, people come are, into the world. Yeah. It's the perfect setup for people like Orochi, for people like Kaido. It's just crazy. Odin and the Nine Red Sheaves, demonized. Mm. And that goes on to our next point, which is we meet someone who is a Kurozumi clan purveyor, so of Orochi's people, and he's talking to another one of his guys. I believe his name was Kishiro Inamuri. And he is talking, I think he's drinking, yeah, he's drinking sake, sake where yeah, he is. He's getting a little bit, little he's bit a drunk. swordsman, he's a massive guy, he looks powerful. He's, that he's, sword he's, looks interesting. His character design is brilliant. Like I think he's, I like all his way of like he's he's going around every single level of the way he wants to depict different characters. Because obviously he's got the whole old school Japanese samurai look, but he's gonna be of a bit of a gangster look to everyone. I guarantee it. Yep, but very Japanese looking. Like he's really going with tradition. And this chap and what he brings up is apparently. The curse of Odin's wife that she descended upon him before voice. she died. So before she died, she said, The light of the moon knows not the break of dawn. Heavens hear me, for I pray. Cast nine shadows across the moonlit nights of twenty years, and know the bright of dawn. Ha ha, her desperate curse, Shogun Oruchi saw it. What did he see? And we have Robin spying, yeah. which is very interesting. Good She's job. there, and it's going to be important in the future. In twenty years... On a moonlit night to take their revenge, nine samurai will appear to kill you and they will open Wayno's borders. Ooh. This year is the 20th. This year is the 20th. This is the 20th year. Now, theory time. What do you think? So, it's quite, listen, everything happens for a reason. Luffy is the future pirate king. Yeah. 
he's we've already built up the plot of he's here to he wants to save the people he doesn't want these people to go hungry again he wants to open up the, the borders one piece one world let's open everything up nine samurai how many straw hats have we got in town we have nine now me and Vimo said we would have an argument in the live reaction to I'll, I'll little bit of but I think we've come to agree what we have to remember is our conception in the west of what a samurai means is a guy with a sword and that's where I went wrong okay and what we have to remember and it's already been pointed out to us by order even a sumo wrestler was considered a, a samurai because a samurai is a warrior the reason why we associate swords with them is because in ancient Japan it was normal for a man to carry two swords this was the way of fighting of the time and a warrior who's a man of honor is a samurai it's a symbolism yeah so if you're a man of honor and a samurai even a Yokozuna can be considered the same. Well, if you're a warrior, if you fight bare hands, because you got you got to remember, people, if you read other manga like Vagabond and everything, not everyone fought with a straight-up sword. If you read Japanese history on Miyamoto Musashi, sometimes people were fighting with a chain and sickle. Sometimes they'd fight with a scythe. Sometimes it'll be with a dagger. Like, mm. it's all the way of the warrior. It's just that the katana is the most praised weapon yeah. of the samurai. But there, are, there were many martial artists of different weapons. And Luffy's a boxer. So, Samurai means warrior. So, it's like a premonition. It's almost foreshadowing that this arc, we know it's going to be a long arc because it's going to be the downfall of Kaido. Yeah. That's why I'm taking that as the borders will be opened. 100%. It's all coming to an end. It's a premonition. I'm, now, where I'm open to the suggestion, the nine samurai don't have to be all the straw hats. It could be some of the straw hats. It could be Trafalgar Law. It could be some of the other supernova. It depends. There'll be nine guys that will... Basically, there'll be nine warriors that will play an important part in the fight. So now, with, with me reaching into them taking out the shogun, nine samurai, and opening the borders, if it so happens to be the straw hats and the nine of them, I'm thinking they're opening up the, the borders to let in their potential allies. Because what we're going to be seeing is the biggest war since Marath. So we're going to need a lot of help. I never thought about that before. And I came to agree with them. Because when Whitebeard went to Marath, he didn't go solo. He never. brought all his allies. Everyone. And the war of that caliber requires allies. Definitely. And maybe that's why we had these front cover thing about the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Yeah. It's like they're getting ready. The build-up. They, they have to be at that level where they can be able to support, which they said they would. At least the father. At least. You understand? Yeah. So, it's going to be an awesome sight to behold. But it's foreshadowing that Wayno's not going to be that whole cake where Big Mom survives and it's left yeah. for a later date. Kaido's getting wrapped in the next two, three years. Whew. Listen, how, said, it's two, not two, three years, it's a long build It's not a matter of if, if, it's just how. Uh -huh. yeah. And that's the interesting part. That's it. Um, we then jump to Odin Castle, and this is the hype of the chapter. Whew, Odin. Take them away. Firstly, I'd just like to say, Odin, thank you. Diarrhea season. I, I just want to hopefully they can get their modium, they can get some doctors in there, because they need something, they need some green tea. Fix that stuff up, man. Pause. Also, thank you for bringing all the Straw Hats back together. Minus True. Robin, who's spying right now. Yeah. But and Zoro, who's run off because he got lost on the way. Yep. And I think they... I don't know whether he did that to keep Zoro and Sanji <laughs> away from each other. Yes, but I can't sir. wait until many more. They yes, meet each other. They're going to have a little scuffle. They're going to have a scuffle. So we find out Kiku's a lover of Kinemon. Yes. That was very interesting, but... Zoro said she was hiding something. Yes. You're true, yeah. And now, the end of this chapter... It kind of alludes to what she's been hiding. Yeah. And once again, take them away. So we have everyone come into the scene. Everyone's so happy to see Luffy. Luffy was very adamant in asking Law what's happened to everyone. Is everyone dead? But he seemed to have figured out when Kinemon came out of the dark that they are alive. Momonosuke is training with two swords in his hands. Two play swords, but he's mastering it. Remember, and they said, Aruchi, the Shogun, uses two swords. Shogun. So Zoro vs. Three beats two. What's doing? Now, what what we tend to find now is that we got the whole team together. We're all happy. Everyone's laughing and joking. Kinemon gets a bit dark. He sits down and says to them, "I have something to tell you that I've not said before." I'm not seeing Luffy take this kind of character, but it was very interesting to see him stop hiding things from us. Be real. Be open. Tell us the truth. Don't hide it. Just share it with us now. Because he considered them as very close Nakama. 
and it was just an epic ending because it really leaves different possibilities for taking the story in many different directions. So what Kinemon said is... The truth is, we were sent here through time from the Wano country of 20 years ago. Time travel. Time travel. Now, theory time. This is so complex, I don't have enough information. So everything we say, don't take us further than a reach, we know that. But at the end of the day, let us explain and let us understand and let's talk. The feeling I got from reading this was, kind of reminded me of when I saw Im Summer. Okay. And the large yeah. joy, like what we, you know, the large straw hat. Yeah. It's something like, wow. something that's distorted in time there. Yeah. That's how it felt, even though it wasn't said. And then, listen, it goes back to what we said in November 2017. It went over our heads. I believe we mentioned it in the video, but Momonosuke, Momonosuke recalls me and Goldie Roger. But as a kid, how, how you're not 20. So how do you know Goldie mm -hmm. Roger? So at the time, I was like, what, what the hell is this? Not, you know, there will be people that probably could have theorized something yeah. from time ago. There's probably loads of theories. But, you know, at best, all you can take it for factually at that given point is, what's this kid talking about? Now it makes sense. It gives clarity to how he would know Goldie Roger. Yeah. Because if he's been sent from 20 years ago, he would know Goldie, Goldie Roger. Roger. Yeah. And so it thinks of possibilities. How did they time travel? That's where the question comes into. Now, you bringing up him summer, we mentioned before, my, my version is he's immortal and he's kept free through the time. But time travel, I've never ever thought of that being a concept in this world. In but, the One Piece world, it's just unfathomable. It's just crazy. But where I kind of thought it might be possible in the direction I'm going to go in, because, and the direction, it's also a bit of bias because this is where I prefer it to go in because otherwise it's a story just gets a bit weird for me to what Oda's consistently yeah. stuck within. And don't get me wrong, the One Piece world is crazy. Um, but the craziness lays in the devil fruits. Yeah, true. So we have so many devil fruits. You have... The OP OP no me that, that can grant eternal life. If using it if certain used in a certain way. There's a lot of things, different fruits that can perform different crazy feats. You got the mirror world. You, yeah. You got you got all these and a the mirror world you can use as a space-time um, yeah. like kind of Literally. distortion. Yeah, because you can jump in through one mirror, get to another mirror in less than a minute, because that and they could be in two different locations. Absolutely. So, and so it's how you can stretch and manipulate the world we live in. Yeah. Now, I don't know how it would work. So you let me in the comment section below if you disagree with me or not. But how do you feel about there being some kind of time, time, no me? Like a devil fruit that distorts time. Like when they were being killed in Odin's castle, because they said that the nine retainers, including all the Odin lot, the Kazuki clan, were killed in the fire. The castle was burnt alive. Um, everyone was burnt. You know, it was brought to ruins. That's why it is the way it is today. If there was one person who had a devil fruit ability, that, and the ability was limited by how many people he can protect or whatever. Yeah. If they're dying, which they died 20 years ago, and today mm. is the anniversary, and he's just said, you know, the truth we were sent to time from Wayno country 20 years, years ago. Now, that doesn't have to be accurate, but let's suppose it is that they literally mean 20 years ago, because this is coming to that. They're saying it's that anniversary. We, we don't know when they actually reached to this world. They could have been there here for another year or so. Or we don't know how long they've been in the run. So if that person can contain the four of them, Raizo, yeah. Kenamon, Momnosuke, Kanjuro, Kanjuro yeah? yeah? You know, Odin, I can see himself sacrificing himself and letting his grandson or kid or whatever he was go on with it. Do you understand? Like, he, you know, that sometimes that's the the older generation will sacrifice for the younger generation. So you think it was Odin's devil fruit? It could be. I'm not saying I think it's his, but he willingly was a sacrifice. I'm yeah. not going to go. You yeah. guys are going to go. Yeah. Protect Momonosuke. Because remember, Momonosuke, yeah. like Luffy, can hear the voice of, of Z Z Z Zunisha. So yeah. there's an ability in him. Yeah, yeah. So, and also the love of his grand... Was it his grandson or his son? Like, please forgive me. I've forgotten that. It's over my head, under pressure, just thinking. But it's possible that someone had the ability to perform a devil type... Like, Imagine if you've got like the concept of the mirror mirror world. Yeah. And you have this thing where like law can do rune. Yeah. Some kind of sphere that was made that takes you into the future. And it could have its limit is like you can do it once and then the devil fruit dies. Or the user dies when he uses it. It's, there's so many possibilities. Yeah. But ultimately we know that they've come from the past. 
Definitely. They've come from the past. Now, I don't want to go through Odin or his or his wife using it, only on the basis that if they had died, that devil fruit would have reproduced and someone else would have gained that uh, devil fruit. Not if it, we don't know where they grow back. And if it they grows back on the closest closest fruit. Okay, and where what was there? A fire. So oh, a lot of people may may not go in there to look at that fruit. And also, were they aware that he had that devil fruit? Yeah. So it's a lot of ungiven information I mean, with a lot of possibilities. Very, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of things, speculation. And I've actually, you know what? I wasn't saying it before, but after you just said that, I will go and say that maybe Odin had such an amazing fruit because he was a king. He, you know, was, he was yeah. a shogun. So for him to have such he a fruit... He was on Odin Rogers' shit. So that would be interesting. Do you understand? So does Odin sacrifice himself with the time, time, no me to send these guys to the future? To rescue the country because where they were there, they who, had no way out. Who else did he send? There's other gravestones there, Serge. But the rest of them are dead. So maybe or maybe not. We, have not, we haven't got enough information. And again, if he sent more, who else was there that died? Obviously, we're going to learn because more. Because we need week. to understand who's going to raise Luffy. Because Luffy needs to level up. So he's one of these individuals of the gravestones. Scott Gabon. Maybe. Jeez. We don't know. We don't but know. crazy thing is. Stay tuned for the chapter next week because I think we need a bit more information before we can really delve into some serious but theory regarding it. It's brilliant, giving us a little taste and giving us food for thought. And shocking us, taking us to a direction we weren't expecting. Definitely, definitely. Man, if you like this chapter, please don't forget oh to smash the thumbs up button. Please check out our other videos in the link below. Leave a like, smash the subscribe button. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you every week. Share the comments. Let's get that dialogue going. We Talk love to talking us. to you every single Always. week. Always. But from Conqueror Saki Corner, it is a temporary. No, hold on. And you know what? We're connecting everything. We do review My Hero Academia, Boku no Hero Academia. So please keep a lookout for that too, if you're a chan. But now that we can continue, it is a peace out.